Like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk, that in him you may grow to salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we keep the second Sunday of Easter, we hear in our Gospel today the story of Thomas encountering the risen Lord. There he acclaims him as his Lord and his God. So as we approach the Lord in this sacrament, the sacrament of his body and blood, and as we hear the scriptures proclaimed to us, let us also in our hearts acclaim Jesus as our Lord and God. And let us pray particularly at this time for all those affected by the current lockdown, for the aged, the infirm and the sick, those in hospital, any who are feeling isolated or troubled at this time. We ask that the Lord will be their health and their peace. So to prepare us ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and we ask for God's mercy and his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace that you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they were be where they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the Apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple each day, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. The Word of the Lord Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. I was thrust, I was thrust down and falling, but the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song, he was my saviour. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons, by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoilt or soiled and never fade away, because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith God's power will guard you until the salvation which has been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being played by all sorts of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold, only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible even though it bears testing by fire, and then you will have praise and glory and honour. You did not see him, yet you love him, and still without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious that it cannot be described, because you believe, and you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward, that is, the salvation of your souls. The Word of the Lord. Christians to the Paschal Victim offer sacrifice and praise. The sheep are ransomed by the Lamb, and Christ the undefiled has sinners to his Father reconciled. Death with life contended, combat strangely ended, life's own champion slain yet lives to reign. Tell us, Mary, say what thou didst see upon the way. The tomb the living did enclose, I saw Christ's glory as he rose. The angels there attesting, shroud with grave clothes resting. Christ, my hope, has risen, he goes before you into Galilee. That Christ is truly risen from the dead we know. Victorious King, thy mercy show. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said you believe because you can see me, but happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger in the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me, but happy those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you think that Thomas was surprised that Jesus had been raised from the dead? What was he really expecting? It's a question that's much more significant than one might imagine. What I'm trying to get at is this. What did the idea of resurrection mean to a first century Jew? The concept of resurrection was a very hot topic among Jews at the time of Jesus. 
One of the main ideas that made Judaism stand out was that many Jews increasingly believed in bodily resurrection. Belief in resurrection was one of the key things that made Jewish thought different from almost every other religion in the ancient world. The Greeks thought it was a ridiculous idea. We hear in Acts chapter 17, for example, when Paul speaks about it in Athens, that large parts of his audience scoffed and laughed at the very thought of it. So for a first century Jew like Thomas, the idea of resurrection would not be a complete surprise. But it was something he would expect to happen to everybody, not just one person like Jesus. The key point is this. If a first century Jew saw someone rise from the dead, they would have to come to only one conclusion. If somebody had been raised from the dead, then the end time was upon them. If someone had come back from the dead, then God was beginning that one great thing that all Jews looked for, the final ushering in of his kingdom, of which the resurrection of the dead was the first sign. I've got a feeling it's that conclusion that Thomas can't cope with, not so much that he's shocked to see Jesus again. So it may be the case that Thomas grasped more quickly and more directly than the other disciples the consequences of what Jesus' resurrection meant. If Jesus was raised from the dead, it didn't just mean their hero had won the day. It meant this was the decisive event by which God was beginning to create the whole of the cosmos anew. This was the turning point of all history. That sense of the imminent arrival of God's kingdom is something it's very easy for us to lose. But I think we're given a, a very important clue by Jesus in the first half of our gospel this morning about how we can preserve it. The risen Lord said to his disciples, as the Father sent me, so I send you. However and whenever God's kingdom comes on earth, our being sent out into the world is part of it. We are actually co-workers with the Lord. It sounds a bit spooky, but in a way, all Christians should be a sign that the end of the world has come. I don't mean we should walk around Kentish Town with sandwich boards proclaiming the end of the world is nigh, but our witness to the risen Lord is a sign that God has decisively intervened in the course of history and is bringing all things to their final consummation. I think this goes right to the root of what we claim to be as a Christian community. For everything we do, all our various activities and worship and service, isn't just about keeping a church building going for the next generation. No, it's about asking ourselves how we go about being a sign of God's kingdom. How do we make sure that when people experience our community, they feel at work the liberating power of a resurrected man who died 2,000 years ago? A power still at force in the way in which we care for each other, the way in which we welcome those seeking faith, still at force in the way in which our worship transforms and renews us, still at force in the ways in which we seek to serve our local community. That's the key thing which lies behind our life as a parish. We need to live in such a way that the power of the resurrection is felt in our community. I think Thomas had the answer when he worked out the significance of those Easter morning reports. For it is only in the power of him whom he called his Lord and God that anything we do is possible. Amen.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, hope and love, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all Christians throughout the world that we might be given renewed joy in the fact of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that we might be able to acclaim him as our Lord and God. Lord, hear us. We pray for the world in which we live. We hold before the Lord at this time all affected by the coronavirus pandemic. We pray especially for scientists whose responsibility it is to find medical solutions to that illness. Lord, hear us. We pray for our local community. Here in Kentish Town we pray for our parish school, for all its children and staff and governors. We pray particularly that this extended time of break that they're experiencing may be a safe and refreshing time. We pray for all in the hospices and hospitals of our area and for all those who are having difficulty in coping with the present lockdown. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are sick. We remember those who have to live day by day with chronic pain or weakness, with isolation or depression. We pray for all who are ill at this time with COVID-19, especially for those in intensive care. We ask that the Lord will help and strengthen them. Lord, hear us. And we pray now for those who have died, especially any who have died as a result of COVID-19. We pray that the Lord will welcome them into his heavenly kingdom. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Lord, hear us. Let us now ask Our Lady, who reigns as Queen of Joy and Health of the Sick, to pray for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, we ask you to have mercy on your people. And as with Easter joy we bring these petitions to you, we ask you to fulfil them as may be most pleasing in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Accept, O Lord, we pray the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis the Pope, with Justin our Archbishop, Jonathan our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty, from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, our holy sacrifice, our spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. And them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, 
for granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of uh, notices for St. Bennett's people. Um, the uh, we've I've had feedback from various people um, about the best way for liturgies to be broadcast and live streamed. Some people prefer live streaming because they like the sense that uh, it's happening live and they're praying at the same time as I'm praying here. Other people prefer YouTube because they find it easier to access if they don't have a Facebook account. So we're going to have a go at doing both those things. So um, the Mass will be celebrated at 11 o'clock. Um, each day this week, uh, Tuesday to Friday, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays it'll be live streamed, and Wednesdays and Fridays it'll be on YouTube, and then um, on Sundays there will always be uh, two masses available: one live streamed at eleven o'clock, and the other available from Sunday morning on YouTube. In addition, um, our food bank is getting a bit low here. Um, you know, most of our harvest produce and the stuff that people donate from week by week to our food bank usually goes into, um, it's all divided up into bags and then it can be handed to people who either call at the vicarage door or who are in particular need at this time. Uh, we've gone, we've had quite a few calls on it of late and our food stocks have actually got quite low. In fact, they're non-existent, we've run out. Um, if anybody wanted to donate some um, non-perishable items that could be handed out to those in need, that would be um, a huge uh, benefit. The easiest thing is to um, buy a mixture of things and pack them in one bag. So I can simply take the bag and hand it to someone that needs it rather than bringing it in boxes or large amounts of one particular thing. The best thing is a, is a mixture of lots of different things in a bag. Uh, in a sturdy bag that I can then hand out to those who need it. Um, I think those are the only notices I have to say. So I wish everybody a very happy Sunday. <laughs>